Welcome to this morning, this day, and this chance to be together with people who aspire to love widely and well. Our Sunday mornings can be a time of joy, a time of uh, comfort, and sometimes challenge. Because in this congregation, we gather to learn about being human. We're not here because we think we know all of life's questions, nor because we think we have all the answers. We're here to learn about being in relationship with others and with ourselves, to learn how to listen, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, and how to build trust and compassion within, among, and beyond. My name is Sue Forbes, and I'm today's service coordinator. I'm accompanied this morning by Chris Miller, whose parents were both founding members of this congregation in 1967. So Chris knows us from way back in all our iterations. Before we begin, I want to point out what's on your screen. The graphics on the right-hand side, or all of these graphics are the, uh, associated with our holiday this weekend, our National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, which officially was yesterday. We're celebrating today. But the eagle represents First Nations. The narwhal, I checked that pronunciation, it's narwhal now, represents the Inuit, and the beaded flower represents the Métis. Let us now move into our service that honors these peoples and this special day. We kindle this flame as a symbol of our gathering. May the light of understanding illuminate our darkness. May the warmth of sharing bring us peace. In this community of care, we hold and witness one another through the seasons of our lives. In this moment, our sanctuary may hold whatever is in your heart today. There's room here for sorrow, for joy, for celebration, for mourning, and everything in between. Today, we particularly think of Nora Coates, a very longtime member of our church. Nora has let Joanna Vaughn know that she's no longer able to come to church regularly as she struggles to be in crowds. We will miss seeing her here, but she'd love to hear from any of us. Uh, ask Joanna or Janny for her contact information. For that which has been shared and for all that remains in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts, we light a candle of hope and caring for our community. Today we light a third candle, remembering that this is our home, but not just ours. The lands we live on, the mountains that ground us, the rivers, the forests, and meadows that surround us, these are the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam nations. Today, we light this candle to honor the lives and the legacies of their children, who at various times in our history were taken from their homes and separated from their culture. Our music today also honors our First Nations neighbors. And Allison is going to. Cultural appropriation. We are a white congregation, and yet we come and live and honor and are grateful for this land on which the indigenous people lived and took care of for millennia. And yet today in particular, we honor and are grateful for the contributions of the indigenous people. The music we're going to sing 
is rooted in indigenous music. We'll start off, not yet, but in a minute, we'll start off with The Earth is Our Mother. Now, this song was written by white people. And yet, there were people who were touched, drawn into the deep spirituality and earth-centered beingness of the indigenous people. So as we sing this song, as we sing all of the material, I would like us to be very aware that we are not and should not sing this material simply for our own gratification, but we sing it out of a place of honoring, of being grateful, and attempting by using this music to touch perhaps into something of the people who wrote it and out of whom it came. We've already looked at uh, the, and sung some of the, the other song, There Are No Other People's Children. That was not created by an indigenous, indigenous woman. It was created by Elizabeth Alexander. But she was very much trying to address the issue of othering, which is something which is very deeply, powerfully ingrained in humanity. And yet, we have to consistently work to try and reach through and past othering to seeing the actual other. On the other hand, the piece that the choir will be singing is Gimmiquendin Aina. This was written by Corey Payette, an indigenous man who trained as a classical singer, as now a extraordinary musician. He wrote a musical called Children of God, which was very specifically about the indigenous children who were taken from their homes, and I want to read something about it. Gimmiquendin Aina is a song taken from Corey Payette's Children of God. In this musical, Tommy and Julia, the children of an Oji Cree family, are sent to a residential school in Northern Ontario. As the school tries to take the Indian out of the child, Tommy struggles not to forget his language, his family, or his culture. And the words of this song, Gimmiquendin Aina, Anin Eshnika Azoyan, Andi Wedjibayan, Gimmiquendin Aina. And it means, do you remember what you are called? Do you remember where you are from? Do you remember? Do you remember our fathers and mothers? Our sisters and brothers? Do you hear them calling you? This song is written in the Ojibwe language. The Ojibwe are part of the Anishabek group of indigenous peoples, the second largest in North America. Territories extend from Quebec around the Great Lakes into the US and to Manitoba. Ojibwe people speak the Anishabawan language, which is still widely spoken today, but is in decline. I am so grateful to Corey. I've been in touch with him. He lives in Vancouver, and I'm hoping we can get him to come and speak at some point. But Corey is using his life to create a bridge between the indigenous culture and the white culture. So let us join our voices together in honoring and singing with gratitude the song, uh, whatever it's called, The Earth is Our Mother. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Our primary speaker this morning is Senator Murray Sinclair, who was the chair of the Indian Residential Schools Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The report from that commission called upon all of us in Canadian society to commit to reconciliation and to build a more respectful relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. As Unitarians, we are called to do our part in that endeavor, and today I hope to do it in a way that inspires us as opposed to making us feel guilty about our sins of the past. A former lawyer and judge in Manitoba, Senator Sinclair still practices law and is the 15th Chancellor of Queen's University. He's also a friend of my sister-in-law in Winnipeg, as both he and Janet share a passion for softball and they often volunteer at the same game, so they sit on the benches together. Janet's not afraid to ask him questions about Indigenous issues, and he always answers them in kind, pragmatic, yet inspirational ways. He's a true teacher who doesn't gloss over the challenges both within and beyond Indigenous culture. Today, Senator Sinclair is going to speak to us via a 2021 National Film Board production called Honor to Senator Murray Sinclair. In this film, director Alanis Obamsawin shares the powerful speech the Senator gave in 2016 when he accepted the World Federalist Movement Canada World Peace Award. Obamsawin, who has over 50 uh, films to her long career, she says, my main interest all my life has been education because that's where you develop yourself and where you learn to hate or to love. And I think it's interesting the way she puts that, isn't it? Through education, which these days has to uh, include social media, but that's how we can learn to hate or to love. And here in this place, it's all about learning to love. When I watched this video last spring, I was moved to tears. I learned aspects of our history that I don't remember being taught in school. And I felt compelled to share the film. I sent it to all my kids and to all of our Sunday service coordinators, among others. And today, it just feels so appropriate to share it with you on this weekend of our National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And by the way, this holiday coincides with Orange Shirt Day, an Indigenous-led initiative <coughs> excuse me, to raise awareness of the intergenerational impacts of residential schools and promote the concept that every child matters. So you'll see some of us with these orange shirts. <coughs> The video is not easy to watch because, at least if you're like me, it will make you feel a bit uncomfortable about some aspects of our history. But personally, I think it's important to learn both the good and the bad sides of our history because that's how we make progress. And that's how ideas that were once thought acceptable, if not noble, can decades later be seen through a different lens. Honor to Senator Murray Sinclair. Thank you. 
As our ushers come forward to take our offering, <clears throat> let us remember Senator Sinclair's challenge to look at what we can do to promote reconciliation, both as a community and as individuals, because we do care. And as he says, we don't have to make it complicated. It might be as easy as buying on every Child Matters orange shirt uh, from a credi credible supplier so that the money is going to the right place, or giving your grandkids an Every Child Matters hockey stick that just recently came on the market to promote, to send the message about Every Child Mattering. Or maybe even more simply, by making a contribution to our offering today because unless otherwise noted, any donations you make this morning will go to the Indian Residential Schools Survivors Society. And the name speaks for itself. In gratitude for your heartfelt generosity and what it does to help other, others beyond this community, we give thanks. And our thanks also go to the volunteers who sing and contribute to our services in other ways. There are too many to name, but I'm going to give a special shout out today to our butterfly team who worked tirelessly yesterday to close up our garden. Stuart Browning, Inga Pullman, Bob Brents, Ruth Sherwood, Joanna Vaughan, Yasha Ramsey, and Linda Vance, and of course, butterfly ranger Jean Prescott. They, they weeded. <laughs> they weeded, clipped, mulched, pulled invasives, cleared dead branches, raked, and beautified our pathways. A wonderful contribution to stewarding this land on our Truth and Reconciliation Day. And I have a couple of quick reminders. We're collecting donations for a Thanksgiving hamper for the North Shore Harvest Project, whose goal is to extend a hand up, not a hand out. Please bring donations uh, by next week's Thanksgiving Sunday and leave them in the foyer. Uh, Bruce Grierson will conduct our Thanksgiving service next week. And in the interim, he asks us to think about grace for that stroke of luck that arrived just when you needed it. The patch held, the baby slept, the check cleared, the pants fit, the fire missed the town. Little things and big things, Bruce reminds us, are all grist for gratitude. And after our close today, please join us for coffee downstairs and maybe, maybe chat about your reaction to today's service and to the film. And about your reaction to just watching a film, period. Uh, during a service. It's, it's an experiment for us, and uh, yeah, we'd like to know what you think. Thank you, Thank you Sue. I have a, one, uh, a couple of announcements around music. Um, we have two groups that will be starting, uh, not groups, one, one is an event. We're doing a talent show on Saturday, October 21st here in the afternoon then with a potluck supper. So if you juggle, if you can, I don't know, do a pole dance, if you sing, <laughs> I'd love to see this congregation doing a pole dance. I think that would be highly entertaining. Um, so we have a talent show coming up, pole dances and all, and, um, and there's something else. I know, guitar, jamming group. So, if you're at all interested in participating in a guitar jamming group, get in touch with either me or Jani. Paul Sangaila has uh, generously offered to hold this space and to make it happen. So, he's not here today, but I'm ever so grateful to him. So, thank you. Please rise as you are able, or not. <laughs>
As we close today, I'll repeat Senator Sinclair's words. The only way that change ever occurs is when the citizens of this country take action. And that, that's us he's speaking to. And so, too, is Tim Atkins, a religious educator at First Unitarian in Oklahoma, when he says, to change the world, we have to have faith in small actions. We have to have faith that in the end, our small actions matter, that they will lead to the result we want. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't, he says. But every single one of us can make a change today that could change the future for the better in ways we can't possibly imagine. Let's try. We extinguish this flame and carry with us the light of vision and the warmth of hope. The world calls to us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love.